Welcome. Thank you guys for tuning in. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> and I need a back scratcher. We have an exciting podcast oh. now. Oh, where's mine? You know, one of the things that makes us unique is the fact that we get these custom instruments, custom ukes from builders, mostly here on the islands, but also from all over the world, from the mainland, from, you know, Canada, Australia, Japan. And today, um, these come and go pretty fast often. So I thought we would uh, do this because we have, what, like nine Mm -hmm. here now? So this is nine. They're all custom tenors. They're all fairly high end. So this is a good video for people looking for that ultimate tenor. And just to make it somewhat fair, we put them all with fluorocarbon strings and they're all with low G. So this is the high end tenor shootout. (laughs) All right. So first up, um, somebody talk about this instrument. So we have a Ko'olau and uh, this is... One of the CS models, this one has a cutaway on it. Beautiful. It cutaway. appears to be a redwood top. Yeah, it's a very old growth redwood. And then we have Milo yep. sides and back. And ebony binding. The Goto tuners that Koala puts on. And got the Florentine cutaway. Yeah, it's a Florentine cutaway. So it's actually no, like the sharper me. one. He told uh, me it was Bolivian rosewood. Oh, is it? No, 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 no it's, it's, it's Milo. <laughs> I don't think he would have said that. I think maybe Ryan was trolling me. Ryan, Ryan trolls everybody. <laughs> but Ryan's amazing. It does have the radius on there. So if you've never played a radius fingerboard, these are very comfortable. What, does, um, what radius do they use again? Is what do they use on that? 16? It's a 12. It's a 12, yeah. It's a 12. This is very Mi- beautiful. Milo's, you know, there's there's been times when Noah hasn't had stock of it or it's been drying for periods of time it he has some of it now it's it's like a real prized hawaiian wood you know oh, yeah. it's harder to find than almost any so i mean it, it's like the hawaiian rosewood right yeah and finding yeah. a good set of milo is like you know it, there's there's so much of the tree that is sapwood and stuff like that and guys like don't you know the quarter saw it, it, it can be a little bit difficult but like i think it's the first time i've seen it in that, a lot of times that color yeah it's really dark, right? Yeah. Isn't Milo normally lighter? Oh, turn it. Hey, look at this. Ooh. It is a little bit more on the rosewood shading than some Milo, but that's, you know, Milo was used for like the royal fa- Hawaiian families back in the day mm. for their like, you know, bowls, and it was it was uh, the most prized wood, and most of it I think was lost um, back when they were burning the forest over, over here. the sandalwood. Yeah trying to get the sandalwood here it's crazy you know we we don't get a lot from noah but when we do it's a real treat oh yeah well um as a as a koala player myself you know i i tend to like the way he can just bring clarity out of all the voices you know like it's just so it's pretty comfortable fresh out of the case too right oh yeah and you can just like setup wise it's you know, even the no, finished talk- quality and everything is... Yeah, I was talking to Billy today, and he was like, if only everybody could yeah. just give us instruments at this quality. Dude, just when you, so you know, there's some things that don't translate maybe in pictures and videos, but Ooh. there's such a clean quality to his lines. Ryan does the finishing, and, like, I don't know anybody that finishes better than Ryan, literally. Ryan, Ryan yeah. is, like, Noah's anal retentive equivalent. You yeah. Know, it's pretty funny that they found each other, isn't yeah. it? All I knew about him when I'd come show up here to pick up instruments for Mike or something, I was like, I just knew he was in a tool cover band. I like, <laughs> really? Oh, that's I, 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 I've known Ryan just as long as you have, and I never knew that about him. Oh, yeah, he sang, too. He was in, he, he was what? Sang. Oh, yeah. Man. Can't, oh, can't, can't picture oh, Ryan cool singing. All I knew oh. about Ryan when he first came in was that he, he was like the, the builder for Pinkham Guitars. And oh, you run? knew of Pinkham guitars? Yeah, you're such a gearhead, man. I'm, I'm like a gear slut, man. Like, <laughs> like, 
such a gear slut. I'm such a well, slut. I actually Jesus. spend a lot of time on gear sluts myself. The forum. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's I'm a forum. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What? Forum. All, All right, right. The gear you can think dude. Of, yeah. I've spent a lot of time that on there, dude. Look, just learning about preamps and mics and all that kind of dude, stuff. Dude, it's it's like all of all the high end like sound equipment that you know used to record and stuff. It's, it's basically gnarly. like an ukulele underground for um for recording, recording. <laughs> but oh, just gear porn. But you have like real recording engineers that go on there and share like really valuable information there's a whole section of it on room acoustics that like i spent a long time geeking out on all that stuff it's, and that's why it's it's you can't so tilt good. up and show this lovely uh pyramid structure any day head. any day it's just gonna destroy somebody oh yeah <laughs> no. sitting under there. Yeah, i feel right like down. i feel like what, what was it the da vinci code <laughs> I'm underneath the pyramid. <laughs> like the Andrew has a button. One day you're just going to be like, I'm tired of this. <laughs> Boom. It's, it's it's out of what? Five takes today <laughs> on this sound sample? Well, not today. These youths are way too nice. Yeah. <laughs> not today. <laughs> Wait, so I'm in the right take it out of here. <laughs> Wait till Corey's sitting in there and you do it to him. <laughs> Don't yeah. pass under the, without, a, without an instrument in your hands. Yeah. So when I took this from Noah yesterday, I was like, um, asked him to give me in his own words his feelings on Redwood. Because, you know, this was a custom order. Um, this was for our friend Tim, who waited patiently for a long time for this. Oh, uh, Hanky. Yeah. Oh. Cool. So, and we really appreciate people with a lot He's of patience. This one. Yeah. Worth it. Oh, Worth man, it. This is oh, like such sure. a beautiful instrument too. It's like, man, and I, I my cool loves redwood. So I mean. Yeah. Really, so really Noah was saying he feels like with it. redwood, it has the. Um, warmth of cedar and the projection of spruce a little bit more you know mm. mm-hmm. what about like stability like between um, the three well i don't uh, ask uh, oh between the three yeah um, yeah you know as far as that goes um i don't think that should be a determining factor personally because all of my favorite builders pretty much have used cedars and redwoods. Oh yeah, and we've sold so many guitars through the years, and I've seen hundreds probably of spruce tops crack because you know I oh, yeah. I worked in a repair department for many years too, and all of those old like Martin guitars with spruce tops all you know they have oh, yeah. <laughs> splits at Issues. some point in time. Um, you know, some builders build a little bit more on the edge, mm. and Koalau doesn't exactly do that but um you know sometimes it can make for a really impressive projection right off the bat mm. and you kind of accept that that there's more of a possibility of of issues somebody like Calais is going to be like traveling around the world and his instrument's going to be subject to much more um elements than your average person you know and the guy that sits at home and you know but yeah. then again, there's if the guy lives yeah. by the beach, yeah. which Kalei also does. So. Well, but also, too, is like for some people that, you know, that just sits at home and play, that could yeah. be a factor in why wood cracks, too, yeah. because it does it can get really dry if you're not, you know, <laughs> exposing it to the outside. That's the weather. other thing. Proper, proper humidification is essential if you're going to be playing an acoustic instrument. I mean, there's just no way around that. You have to keep a a really good balance of humidity because anything will crack if you get it dry enough period you know just like it's it's one of those things that you just gotta you gotta really if you value your instrument you gotta really take care of it and what's that kind of case uh chris Tilly has for his five hundred thousand dollar mandolin it doesn't open like it stays locked unless the the outside humidity is there. I have no idea I've never even heard of that oh. that's pretty cr- that's crazy what is that it won't open the case the case won't open unless it's like in a properly a, humidified yeah. area so, no, that's a great idea but that thing probably uh, that thing probably that. costs like a what? well I mean that it's mandolin is $500,000 oh, sounds like the singularity man you the robots a, you got a half no. a million dollars. You just want to play. Just just let me play. It, it like <laughs> malfunctions and it's not reading the humidity correctly. Well, I mean, if you had like Lock a your car keys very in smiling, it. right? <laughs> Imagine this, like you're on stage doing a show and then your case won't open up. Yeah. And, and you're uh, just like, hey, everyone, listen, um, I'm just going to stall time. Everybody just, just came everybody just dump some water on a paper towel and just <laughs> yeah. run it up yeah, in the sure. air. 
Oh, wait, wait, I can open it. Oh, okay, all right. Right now, people are like, look, are we going to listen to these instruments or no. what? <laughs> no, Sorry. we're going to talk about it. We're not going to play them. We're, 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 we're sandbagging it because we don't... We don't yeah. I don't, I don't think you're ready for like this. Like before, I, I these two guys... That. You're not ready. <laughs> you're not ready for this jelly. Yeah. Man, you guys, like... <laughs> Ooh, I wasn't ready. This ukulele is too booty-licious for you. Booty-licious. Peanut butter jelly town. All right. Kolal CS Custom. It's like, I can it tell. reminds me of like when mine was new, you know, before like, <laughs> like there's a crispiness to the sound. It's a pop. Yeah. It's like a new skateboard deck. It's got a yeah. pop to it. <laughs> nice and, but it literally required no effort to get sound yeah. out of it. There's like, I mean, you guys know me. I'm like, I'm, I'm like super worried about like scratching these tops. I can never play it the way I play on my own instrument on another instrument. And it just kind of came out of that thing without really having an effort. Oh, look at this. Oh. Look at that hive. Dude. Okay, so I got a story about this guy, okay? So this is back when, like, we started doing, we started, because we always had coal out. And I never felt, and, and, you know, maybe you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I never felt like coal out could be considered, like, one of the Ks because it was never, like, a... Um, they, they were never mass produced you know it was it wasn't like a regular production line. i mean you had no building everything and so um i never felt like it sat in there with the case and so i remember telling andrew really early on that i wanted to like go and find some of these builders that you know was what i saw online and i would see their stuff and i remember seeing um jake mcclay his hive ukuleles and remembering him from when uh mike brought in the compass rose ukuleles and jake was a head builder for compass rose and i was always always impressed with his build quality and just the sound that he would evoke out of these instruments and i think um That's the right. hornet models remember that stuff like, you so, you formed I that kinda relationship forgot about that. for us yeah. first you were on the phone with him a lot yeah I, I called him up and showing I just, me you know, his website i'm like yeah. Oh, yeah i was like we gotta get this guy i forgot right? he built for compass rose yeah and i, I remember i told him i said he basically was, and and uh, yeah, he, yeah, he was he was the builder for them, but um, until you get hives in in person, I mean these instruments that he oh. builds, you don't see how, like he's one of the only people other than Noah that's super meticulous. Oh, dude! Every little edge of the finish and every you know aspect of his build, and he's developed kind of a over. You know, at first it was a little bit more like, um, you know, takes on different custom mm -hmm. guitar builders, rosettes, and different things like that. He's kind of developed his own style in this su simplistic, elegant, um, tasteful design where, um, you know, you see like that that rosette on the inside yeah, there, and just the that inside lip. He's got that piece of right. happening. And he'll often so. use like bindings that are similar to the side, but with purfling lines, and mm -hmm. all of his miter joints are just right on yeah. point his his woodwork and that's the thing like a lot of these like like uh noah bonk of koala um his woodwork is excellent so and there's a it. deep understanding of blue three from him oh, but yeah. um this is a 12 fret to body um versus that the koala was 14 fret to body and most of these are going to be 14 that puts uh, a little bit more warmth oftentimes mm -hmm. putting the you know the bridge right in the center of the the belly there but in terms of feel anything you want to add yeah well i mean i've always i've always really liked his necks i do feel that the um 
that when when I play his instrument, I know I'm, I'm feeling it, and I can I can feel that that's a quality instrument. You know, like there's there's no doubt you're playing it. If if you were to blindfold somebody and put this in their hands, they would not think it's a cheap instrument. You know, it, it's no, you can tell. There's a level yeah. of like elegance to yeah, it's just, it's it's like a very um, I I don't know, I don't even know how to put it. But I do notice one thing that he changed. Remember when he first started sending us ukes? He was sending us, um, they had that really thick um, the saddle. Mm -hmm. It was really, right. really big. And so you could, you could. there was a lot of room to intonate it forwards and backwards and stuff like that. But they always came in really, really cool because it's like 12 frets. So, you know, um, they were already good. But I noticed he's gone to a more traditional looking saddle now. And, um, that was one of the things I was saying to him early on. Like, why is the saddle so fat? But, I remember you know. it being like, hmm, well, this is. It must have taken such an amount of work to do that, though. Because, I mean, you saw it, like, and it wasn't just fat. It was like it had those lines in it, and then it had the holes in it. Like, I mean, you could tell he, like, spent time. Those yeah. Just like with the nut there, with the yeah. scalloping. That was a whole project. The scallop nut. You know, I mean, he, he really, really, he, it's a very elegant instrument. All right, uh, so this one has, I think... Virginia or West West Virginia Red Spruce, yeah. which is uh, his hometown originally, but it's also got Claro Claro Walnut, which is um, getting more from and the, more popular amongst guitar players. from the area that he was building there in Santa Cruz with um, Compass Rose stuff. I like to call it the mainland core. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not far off from it, actually. Like the, it, the way the way they use it is pretty much the same thing that really solid wood you know and uh, I like the way he puts the back plate on it too it makes a more stable headstock and and it just looks no it, it awesome. just sandwiched in there it's nice yeah it just looks it looks awesome he's not <laughs> throwing a bunch of flashy stuff on it it's just it's it's really tasteful the whole thing yeah. the way it's done it's it's well even designed. down to the markers like the fret markers are you know like, I like that too it's, it's a circle with the inside yeah, it's yeah. A circle, the mini you know, circle but I mean yeah, you know, some people clean. like, you know, they're they're putting like purple lights under their cars and rims that like spin around and all that kind of jazz. Dude, if you want, I, is... I'll do it to your car too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Don't, give me some green. I wasn't strings. trying to call out. Uh, they got it at Walmart. Joel's Pimp Ride. But, um, <laughs> but you know, this is just like that sleek, elegant, you yeah. Know, yeah, it's, it's, it's classy. Like... It's like a Tesla. <laughs> the Tesla. Well, and one thing too is like you know when you pick up a, you can tell that it's a good quality instrument when you when you pick it up. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I would like, have, you to have to say a Blackbird. A just... Blackbird equal as a as a Tesla. Oh, okay. yeah, it's the modernization. Yeah. So this would be this would be like what? The... This is a this is a, I don't know, like a Ferrari, like a, like a Rolls Royce. Well, you know, what, sound wise though, these are on par with everything with, with anything else, and the build quality, the lines. Are epic and stuff but he doesn't go overboard he doesn't like make um and he's not trying to make it about the look he's trying to make it about the experience of the instrument and that's what i feel is like when i hold it it's this very you know it, it's a stable everything about it is stable i when i play it I, i'm very comfortable holding the neck and and it's a thick neck but it's still oh, very yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's a bat you know but it's 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 I wouldn't call super, it a bat, but it well, definitely I mean, has this some way, girth to it. Yeah, this way, this way is like it's it's like everything else. But this way, and it sits in your in your hand just so nicely, you know. Got some girth it's brooks. Like, yeah, girth brooks up in here. Oh, Corey, I like that. One. I I don't know why I didn't think girth. of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, let's take a listen. Yeah, so here, let's hear how it's. Oh, and there's a side port over here which i'm a big fan of because i have that in my weimer and i never knew i liked those things until jeb put one in the side for my and like it's even the side port it's not even a yeah there's, there's no binding on it but fancy. it's just nice but the edges look at are... look at the edges of it right yeah. like there's no sharp edges it's no super... finish build up you yeah, know? yeah. So we get a lot clean. where people get fancy but they just like don't clean they up gotta very clean well it up after yeah. Yeah. And that's the other thing is like when you look inside of his instrument, if you look at that, like I mean, the glue lines, everything. Yeah, no. I, think it, I think about it. Uh, he's the Mercedes. Mm. There you go. That's it's a Mercedes. It'll be the Mercedes. This would be like the Mercedes up there. So, um, but yeah, even like that back strip, like the um, the lining on the inside, mm -hmm. it's like multi wood. Yeah, it's very attractive. 
Well, and the attention to detail that he gives too. Like, I mean, like, I mean, look, even even the the bridge pins have that same theme that's going on in there, and even the side markers have that same circle. Of it's a not circle a open, yeah. yeah, it's an open. So, and then I the mean, tuners, the 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 buttons are black. The yep. the hardware is gold. Waverly, the same thing right? with the Waverly tuners on this one. So. And all his stuff comes with an Ameritage case, so so it definitely is. Uh, oh yeah. Super well protected. It's a Mercedes with all the options. You all you good. Know, it's like all that. All good. Yeah, you have to wear leather Mercedes. seats and all that. Yeah, yeah, it's the full package right here. like this instrument i didn't even want to like play one thing and i wanted to like play everything it makes makes you just want to play and um i think that's one one thing i found in a lot of jake's instruments is um when when you pick it up you kind of like you start playing something and you start going in another direction and you just want to like you just want to play it. yeah you, you stop thinking about like oh i gotta do this or i want to play this song you just, you just start finding yourself going all over the neck and what I like about it is the, the overall tone is so balanced. Oh, yeah. You get this feeling of like this. It's refreshing. It's a very even, even volume. They're inspiring. And, you know, we salute people that build Great on this level. Great writing instrument. I mean, you could sit down and come up with 10 different ways to play one thing. with just the And it's very versatile. Yeah, you can play yeah. different genres. And Beautiful instrument, man. And plus, too, we rarely get um, hives... Too. It's not a regular thing, too. And I want Such to like point out also that on the headstock of the of the hive instruments, you notice it doesn't say hive. There's no name on there or anything. It's like when you got when you buy those like high end jazz guitars, like there's no name on the headstock, you know. And I think he's it's it's kind of like the, he's got the name on the inside of the sound hole on a sticker. And it's a very very nice looking sticker. Very. I, I guess at this point, like it would be more of like visually and what you hear is kind of like. There is no need for a logo. Yeah. Because you, you, you he, know what you're saying. Like, like, what is yeah. that? Jake's like, you know what it is. You know who it is. But there's people that have. You know what's up. Somewhat, I don't want to say copy, maybe it been inspired by his shape. Mm. But he's the first one I saw doing Yeah, this. with the hornet. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. That shape that he did. I, I remember looking at that thinking, like, wow, man, look at that. But there are, like, you know, the. he. I think he made different sizes too back in the, uh, I don't know if he's still doing is he still doing a concert uh, oh man I don't know I think right now he's just doing tenors. just tenors yeah. but he was he was doing like the different like body shapes and stuff too and I thought they were all looking cool you know he takes a long time to build oh, and, yeah. and because he's a perfectionist you know he knows if he would just be quicker with things it's kind of like you yeah, know, Joel, like knowing that he could do setups faster, but it's like, ah, I just don't feel it kind of eats away at you. You're like, I know it's there, I can so fix it. I respect that guy to the max because you know he does, he cares that much, and he's only putting out a dozen or so instruments a year. Yeah, and we see one, maybe two a year, but it's you well, know, it just makes them more special. I mean, I mean, yeah, and the reason he's doing it is because he wants it to be awesome. Lotus? That's right, tulip wood. Tulip. Lotus Not one. Acoustics. So, but tulip. This is tulip wood? <laughs> yeah, why yeah. don't you guys talk about that? Uh, yeah. If I, since it is made in Japan by Russia named Nishihara. Uh, what is this? Yuki. Yuki. <laughs> We should describe it in all Japanese accents. <laughs> or maybe I can't do just a Japanese you. Accent. Maybe just you. Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure I would sound racist. I think, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I 
At least one call person would call us on it. I think, I think all of us. At least I, I, I kind of look Japanese, even though I'm not. But like, I, Corey has it has it down. Oh no, um, I don't want to. Corey Push for, started for Japanese right, customers. Corey son, give a Japanese explanation of this instrument. Yeah, can you speak it in Japanese? Can you like um, just describe it in Japanese? Kono ukulele wa made in Japan this. That's that's, uh, that's, that's, that's I this ukulele is made in Japan. I got it. Yeah, I got it. Show that <laughs> show, show the back and sides. I love the look of this mm-hmm. wood. It's got this really mm-hmm. vibrant. It's almost like if you gave rosewood, you know, um, a, 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 a pink bat, a bleach. bleach. It's like a like no. rouge. Yeah. yeah, it's like blush. It's mm-hmm. like a color. Of yeah, blush. blush. Yeah. yeah. I I know why they call it tulip wood. Yeah. It it does almost have a floral. Do you want to give it a kiss? Mm. I don't really kiss tulips, but you got two lips. You got to kiss them. Oh, <laughs> hey! Oh. Wait, you're not a dad yet, huh? You can't make those dad. Who jokes. said? <laughs> dad jokes. Well, right, dad. Right, right now we got ten lips. All right. I think I think Joel's trying to make two. an announcement. Well, huh? like I thought Joel was gonna say something like, "Well, what's better than roses on a piano?" <laughs> You remember that one, right? What? Two lips no, on my I... organ. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That never got any woman at a bar ever. Oh. Never. I never. never. That, that's that's why I couldn't work anywhere. Well, not here at least. They're not gonna they're not gonna understand. Dude, not that. anywhere. <laughs> Who would go for that? What's better than uh oh, roses on a piano? Oh, well I mean that was my Maybe. old pickup line in high school is Oh you baby. Oh, I still work. <laughs> It does. It does. And it worked all the time for me, too. Hey, honey girl. Like it? <laughs> Depends where you're at it, too. Digits. Digits. What's up, baby? All right, all right. Okay, let's, let's not give away the secrets. It's yeah. almost a traditional Hawaiian sound. I mean, yeah. that's what it's I'm very, hearing in my ears. You know? It's very strange because it doesn't look like it sounds. You yeah. Know I mean, you would, no, 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 would, no, no, you would no. think it would be a brighter, more... I mean, it is bright, though. It is in the brightest. It is bright, yeah. but it's yeah. not like the way you would think, because like, you think in spruce, and to me, I'm thinking this kind of looks like... I think like, the color throws you off. Yeah, it throws me off because I'm thinking I'm thinking it's going to be like a like a really hard, like a, like a wenge or, a, mm. or like a rosewood sort of sound. I'm expecting... So what did it have more warmth than you were? Expecting? It was warmer than I thought it was. It, it yeah. was gonna be, and um, I was surprised too at how how bright, but then warm it, it is at the same time. Most uh, luthiers, Japanese luthiers, um, they they try to go for that brighter yeah. kind yeah. of sound. Yeah, but well, mm-hmm. it's it's balanced though. It's not like a it's not like a bright. You know, like how some you sound bright and they're they're very like. You know, almost ice picky like. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. but this is not anything but, like you that. You know, it's, a... it's like the first, the the two before this almost had this guitar yeah. type sound to them. This is a uke. and this is a very ukulele. Yeah. But then on that classic high end, ukulele sound. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say it has like a this vintage like yeah, quality. I wonder, kind of I wonder if some of the like because this is a stiffer than average spruce stop, considering that it's bear claw. So, you know, the the more bear claw you see. The rule of thumb is right, and mm-hmm. the more yeah. st- bear claw you see, it's a little bit stiffer. So, um, it's given us that brightness. But I'm, I'm interested in this wood because it's, it's pretty. Well, and, it's yeah. Well, it's gorgeous and it's bright sounding. That's what it reminds me. It of. still has that. You hear that? There's body to it. That low G is really coming yeah. out from this. Yeah. So, and that's. I think that's what's impressing me. About Actually, it. like when we had it in the shop, it was strung up with a high G, and then oh. I was like. 
Uh, I think this Has would be sound OG, better yeah. with a Good call. Good call. <laughs> so I just yeah. threw on the the Fremont soloist. So if you stain it a little a little darker on the back back and side woods, it would look a lot like Coco Bolo. I, yeah. I like it like how this. Dare you. I think this looks gorgeous, man. Yeah, I've never seen so a wood. Like it does. That's why. Yeah. You know? the, yeah the, the, nothing comes through like that. I've never seen a wood that looked like that. And I'm, it is. I'm it's digging like the, the the headstock. What oh, is this so, on the headstock? Uh, Coco Bolo. No, That's I don't know what the back inside is. That's what, what kind of tuners is that? Like real Tahitian it's pearl Zircote, or something? It's I think on the back inside. It does look like Tahitian the pearl. Is, uh, but they're Waverly tuners. The buttons do look like Tahitian pearl. That is the Waverly uh, Tahitian pearl. It's like four hundred yeah. bucks. Oh, jeez. Nice. Oh, oh, so <laughs> Coco Bolo back plate, uh, Zircote, um face plate. He does that oh. because he he doesn't want it to be. Like you know, that that's a typical thing, right? To you use the same. Up. I see Japanese yeah. builders do that more often, though. Just to, to change it up a little bit, yeah. not do the obvious. Yeah. You know, like of course you're gonna use the same face plate, uh, yeah. you know, for the back plate. I like how the um the rosette is too. It's like yeah, it's not too fat, but it's got layers to it. You know. Yeah. Analysis it's just like it. It again looks very elegant, like the high, but in a different way, though. Like completely different way. Not in trying to distract from ukuleles, but that just gave me an idea. Using two different woods, what if you use two different types of bread to make one sandwich? That would probably be delicious. Oh, white bread. Why doesn't anyone do that? Like if you used a rye, rye and a whole so, wheat. Whoa, Joe, you can't do that. You, you can't see well, that. Wait, no, wait. Don't try to stop me. <laughs> don't. You can't. <laughs> we don't want anybody to know. We got to do that. You're gonna steal your idea, right? Though. It's, yeah, I'm why totally not? With you. I'm I'm, I'm with that's... you on that, man, dude. Like, but I didn't think of it until that. Oh, or it could man. be a hybrid sandwich. You like know how the, the, their ooh. craft beers popped up in the last decade and took over, like craft oh, sandwiches, man. and then it's like any 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 idiot can mix cheeses. And if you cut it in bread. half, you could have four <laughs> different breads for one sandwich. Imagine Whoa. if you take two different sandwiches, different styles, and you stack it on. When you bite through, you get from the distinct look of the ukulele in Aaron's hand right Charlie now. Charlie Fukuba. E E V ukulele. E E V ukulele. And, um, local Japanese, local Japanese, <laughs> yeah. and check this out. Man. Get three piece back, Pal Faro. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And you know, did you know Stevie Ray Vaughan used Pal Faro for his fretboards? Mm. Really? Oh, yeah, SRV's Pal Faro fretboards, and it was his favorite fretboard wood. Why? Not, I don't know. I, I have. I wish I knew the answer to that. But I mean, all I know is that's the, the when I first heard of Pal Faro being used in instruments, I was like, oh yeah, like Stevie's. Because it, it has like an inherent kind of oil to it, right? Does that have anything to do with that? I'm guessing that's probably what it is. Now, there the also feel? GNL was using Paul. Fer- or who was using Paul? Fer- was it GNL? Somebody was using Paul Ferrell. Almost everybody. With the whole has been thing, recently. Right? Yeah, so, Fender. Yeah, Fender, Fender was using yeah. it. So I mean, yeah, all these mm. brands were using Paul Ferrell on the fretboards now. But it's called Bolivian rosewood, but it's not technically a Dalbergia, which made it um, an actual rosewood. But people yeah. have been, you know, oh. when, when I worked at Cola, we used. Pal Farrell for the fretboards for all the Model 100s and I think even the 200s at the time, you know. I remember those it's models. A, yeah. What is its close cousin models. to, like, what's a... Well, I mean, it's... It's, it's a like South a, American yeah. hard, you know, wood, exotic wood that's uh, similar to your rosewoods and, and that yeah. sort. Well, I mean, it's, like you said, it's not a Dalbergia, but it's not, like, it's not exactly, like... As far as, like, like species, what is it closer to... Closer. I would I would probably say it's closer to like a zircote or something mm, because it's yeah, probably, yeah. outside of it's outside of the rosewood family but it's like a rose it's rosewood like in that sense so um, the again we got a bear claw that's uh, a pretty cool bear claw yeah like, and it's almost like sick. quilted spruce mm-hmm. look at that man they should that just gnarly? call it yeah. silk spruce that's like pretty silky and the the true Dude. oil finish kind of like it complements it yeah. nicely right and it feels yeah. nice i love charlie's stuff i kind of wonder yeah. if he did use a high gloss finish in it how, how i don't how know much it, i kind of like know. it i kind of like the way he finishes yeah. things you know like I, I i don't think it would have the same kick in it when i when i pick it up as like it it feels like a hoin yeah because no, that's what it is you. he right? has exactly. done it before and he's setting up actually to do it again as an option yeah the varnish finish kind of makes me think of like um you know, when growing up, when you like all of us probably played Kamakas growing up, yeah. you know, and it's like it kind of feels like that, yeah. you know, it's like there's mm, that quality to yeah, it, that lacquer kind of 
feel to well, it. Even, even the like, sound, the the texture and yeah, stuff. when you rub it, because you like to like you don't like a glass neck, right? I've seen yeah. you take steel yeah. wool to the back I've, of your I've neck. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, and like Jeb won't let me do it to my Weimer, but like I mean, like Maybe that's the only that. neck I've, I've ever, you know. Oh, with that in mind, um, I should point out because it doesn't have it on it, but. When you buy these ukuleles, there's a pick guard that he's made oh. that's um, like for Those that three right. sound hole cutout. Yeah, so so we'll ship it with that pick guard, or if we get the request, we'll put it on for you. But it's one of those things where some people won't want it and some people do want it. And I'm cool. sure that would look sick though, you know. Oh, it's no. just clear. Yeah. yeah. But oh, know. it's a clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think gives the option those, like, though. Right, right, right. <laughs> do we still have the other single? Sound hole we do have model. the single sound hole. You know, in this sh- shootout or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> figured the three hole was more of like yeah. chart indicative of what yeah, it exactly. It's more his style. It's more like what he right. does, right? And I love the E E V bird as you. No, yeah. no, I was like, I wanted, I wanted to, I wanted you to see it because it was like a reminded me of a Martin. Oh, really? Like a D twenty eight or yeah, he's horn. got that shape. Yeah. Does, it, does it have like the the um? It's the just like that hole. with a single hole. Oh, yeah. Cool. It's a herringbone. I love that he uses planetary tuners. If you're going to use this style tuner, uh, don't use friction tuners, guys. I mean, Enough already. Like, dude. No more friction tuners. <laughs> please, please. You can always upgrade. Hey, did, you guys, did you guys see the um, Nainoa sent the um, little clip of like our, the first of our custom Connie Leia's? They put it on? Came oh. up. They have the Goto UPTs on yes. it, and it looks so good. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. It's like, I can't wait black to one. Uh huh. Yeah, buddy. Here's number one, bare Sitka spruce soundboard, flamed maple back and sides with your orbital tuners in the back. Sounds super cherry. Yeah, we, we gave them to them oh to man. use. That's what I think. Oh, that's right. I put them in the bag. Mm-hmm. See, now this is what I think, like Hawaiian. Yeah, right? No, it is yeah. a Hawaiian yeah. sound. You hear that? That's what I'm talking about. Man. It's, it's like that. It was built for that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's exactly. what it's made for. This thing it's was like made guitar. for you like that. the poi real sour. Yeah. Oh, extra sour, extra fermented. Up. This is like one of these ukes though. You almost kind of want to like. Oh, 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 that's that's illegal. that kind of stuff because it has that tone to it yeah? hell yeah I'll tune it back up so whoever gets it <laughs> I love it there we go. So, but yeah man that's one of those I mean and I'm I'm, I'm a big one of those guys like oh it's like the ukulele I already got the G on there but like the uh, something about that Gotta sound just makes you want to do it you know like, <laughs> just makes you want to makes you want to slack that key oh. slack that Slack that key. Do it. Oh. Bruh. That's one you haven't seen before. No, what is this? Pigeon tree. Right out there from Texas. It's not the pigeon. Oh, man. This thing's got like a... What's the pigeon? It's got a really nice smell in it, too. You I'm glad you smell them, too, because I yeah. thought... Back when I worked for Mike, we smelled them. City? And I thought I was weird. Oh, yeah, I know everybody does it. No, you, you, you gotta smell you the have juke, to. man. It's it's like oh, dude. Since I was a kid, like wood walking shop? into a wood shop is awesome, dude. That's the best. Okay, you know, so you know, we were talking about like ways to make you know the smell transmit, but like 
Um, I saw on a lot of the new VR, there's, that's one of the senses that they're implementing is smell. Really? What? Yeah. So I think, you know, maybe by 2022, maybe 2023, the com, you'll be able to press a button and get the aromas of the, of well, the you pizza know what, the, the scuff by the wood pack. That's one of the things that people would say. When I, I remember when I worked in the shop, they would say, man, it smells wonderful in here. They would walk in. And it was all the woods, right? Do they still say that when they yeah. come in? Yeah, yeah every yeah, they time. Do. Yeah. It's like, man, it's like the the smell of that that just fresh ukulele. So, I mean, you gotta do it, yeah. you know? Like, not wood smells awesome, yeah, yeah, it, dude. It's like the wood shop that is an earthiness to it, and, and something I think, you know, it's when you smell that. It's like you, like you step on grass with bare feet. Right. It's different. Yeah, it's, a so it's like that. It's a connection to it. Like I mean, yeah. well, you can call it whatever you want, but it's different. Oh, so we put tree huggers. <laughs> oh, I'm just joking. Call me that then. I'll hug <laughs> I'm just joking. They need it, man. They need all the hugs they can no, get. No, no, you're, you're completely right. So who Trees knows about love. this uke? Who, 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 who's? Um, Jay, Jay Nelson is in uh, the San Antonio area, I believe, this and, is in Texas, Texas. and he's right one of the Texas. most passionate. Um, insightful people I've ever met. Like I text with him regularly, and um, he's he's he built some classical guitars. Learned from a classical guitar builder. Then he bought a Morbetta from us to study. He bought some other ukes to study. He's always studying the market, but he's so passionate about building that he's just you know it's like. It, it it's like he's just in the thick of it just loving it and i love mm-hmm. to see that and it, it translates into his instruments you know so check it out and see what you think um he's building with the spanish style heel and 12 what do we have to bodies, as far as spruce, like the woods on ebony this thing? it's ebony and spruce right what kind of spruce is this do we know oh do you guys know i didn't see this one on the list so i didn't pull it up oh yeah yeah it I kind of there. looks like sitka um, I I want to think it's something different though, like uh, and the binding is really incredible because it's like multi layered binding. It looks like there's Adirondack, there's Koa, oh, Macassar, Ebony. Ah, oh, it's Adirondack, dude. This is some tight grain that around that. So give it a strum, a quick one. How much? Sound? Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Dang, that thing is dude, loud. Dude, this thing pumps, man. I think it's a cannon. And if you look at that rosette, that's all individual that's circles that yeah. he inlaid and then My cut out. Part. Yeah, the, the circles are cool, man. I'm digging the circles. He's and got some new ones he's building for us with a whole tree of life theme on the back. But everything he's doing, like even these circles are done in like a limited series of three. And uh, he's just doing like styles in short runs. And then he's moving on to other things because he's, he's full of ideas and he's very creative. And I think that's just such a cool thing when you um, getting accustomed knowing that like this is actually a one of a kind piece because... The next one's going to be different. And he's been experimenting with different style headstocks and finishes mm-hmm. and all kinds of things. So it's like, it's really just... Uh, are these Spurzel tuners? Or are they shalers? What are these? What is it? Shaler. Um, oh, it's the Grand Tune tuners. Oh, so, yeah. Those Shaler Grand Tune. Yeah, those are so great. Those are yeah. Excellent oh, yeah. Those are really high-end tuners. Those, like, you know, people that used Waverly's before were like, oh, I like these. So it's like they're on that level, you know. But yeah, all high quality stuff, and uh, well, I like the binding on here. I think this looks incredible. It's like they got coal. What is that maple? And and they've got like um, like look at that. That's like two two yeah. different types of coal and maple. <laughs> and then you've got like a um, like like the red. I don't know if that's a, a wood or that's actually the uh, purfling, but it does. Look, there's like red and green. I feel like in five years he's gonna be famous, and these kind of first ones from him are gonna be have some value. Yeah. yeah, he's obviously got like a art, like a creative. Yeah, it's way like about bought... him too, like the rosette and stuff. Like it, it's all really, it ties in nicely. But yeah, he's got, got like cool a cherry blossom uh, inlay going up the neck on one coming, and uh, he's got a just he's Look just full of ideas. He's just he's just excited about yeah. Binding. He's yeah. Did you see the fretboard binding? Like he's got like okay, so the top layer is like coal, but then you look at the side; it's got like that maple, and then you've got those two. <laughs> it like reflects on. That's, he, that's, that's insane crazy. that he did all that work. I mean, and it sounds like a damn cannon. Too, you know?
that didn't distort your guys' speakers. I heard it in my headphones. That was, was, it, was uh, it buzzing? Was it like distorted? No, it was, yeah, it was oh, dry. It was clipping right. a bit, but it was, I mean, that's because it's It popping. was great. Yeah. Yeah, man, this Power. thing is, dude, dude, Adirondack, man. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? It's like but one damn. of those sounds you don't, I have a, you, you don't mind hearing it in your headphones full blast. Yeah. <laughs> I have a, Noah built me a Koa, um, like a, it's a Koalao. OM with the the same uh, Cuban mahogany sides and back, but it's an Adirondack top. And I haven't I, heard that in a long time. Dude, that Cannon. thing is like man, it's like, man, it's, like I mean, it's as loud as my dreadnought. You know, oh. it's like an OM. <laughs> it's like, and my dreadnought's a calling, so you know those things are already kick as it is. But yeah. I really like this U two. Oh. oh man, we got some good ones tonight. Whoa. I know this is like the grind. Okay, Ooh. so I mean, anybody, if you were doing a, a tasting, this that is pretty know good. Steve Grimes. Is not like the guitar player side of things. This guy is the best archtop builder in the world. I don't care who hears me say that. <laughs> the tone Steve. on this uke, oh man, Ryan's I, gonna get offended. But I mean, this is a guy that's an Steve archtop was builder. building archtops when Ryan was yeah in, in diapers a tool <laughs> cover band. No, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Maybe well, in diapers. Oh. Well, Steve, I mean, and Steve's built guitars for every, like, he's built a guitar for Eric Clapton, you know? So, so it was, I mean, it's like, it's super sick. If you go look on his website, Grimes Guitars, and he is a fantastic ukulele builder. In fact, this past um, Ukulele Guild of Hawaii thing that we had, the event that we had, I got to sit down and, and talk to Steve for a little while. And his passion for building is, yeah. like, unheard of man like this guy just loves to build and that's like his his passion in life is to make great sounding instruments. and you know what you can tell he's a player because feel that thing oh yeah it's butter i mean it plays so easy his his edges are rounded his you know what i mean and listen to the sound man Take a look at this thing, man. Yeah. It's like, what's the woods again? It's insane. So that one is an Amazon rosewood back and sides. And look at how tight grain that spruce top is. Like, yeah. you see that? It's like super tight, man. Little details like the way he bound the so side sound port. Mm -hmm. And look at, and the other thing about this top, though, you see all this stuff? This is called Medullary Ray. And. Yeah, it's cross like, cross silking. Yeah, it's cross silking. It's in it when it's actually like perfectly, perfectly quarter sawn is the only way to get it like that. And so this is like the creme de la creme piece in the log that mm. like is on here. And it well <laughs> and if I could describe the sound, I've always felt that like Steve's Ukulele sound like a cross between a kamaka and a ko'olau. Mm. Oh, interesting. It's, like, it's, a, it's, a, a, it's a great description of it. A kamaka. A kamakalau. It's a kamakalau. And actually, what's really um, interesting, too, is that he built Jake an ukulele. I saw that, yeah. And then um, I think um, Ron Artis mm. was borrowing it for a while, too. That thing sounds really, really good. It's, it's hey, there's an interesting I I love the sound. It's there's almost like a compression to it that yeah. I like. To where like you get a fat sound even out of the higher notes and stuff, but let's take a listen. That thing is another cannon. Bro, this thing is kicking, man. Isn't that crazy?
Damn it. There's, there's something <laughs> about the body to it. Yeah, I mean, the body I of sounds. So. Yeah. It kind of has its own unique yeah. sound, like you're, you're inside of it while, it's, while you're listening to it, you know? There's, and, and again, the side part comes yeah. into play here, um, for me anyway. The thing I notice about Steve's builds are that, like, it's, it's like one of those things where you have, like, a, a genius at what he does. He's constantly evolving. And like it, it's never like done the same way, but it's all brilliant. Does that make sense? So, your guys' stuff. Everybody knows Corey's sound within like a couple. Oh yeah. Of, a couple That's of why I like notes. doing these sound samples with different people. Oh yeah. You know yeah. because it's almost like I hear almost a bigger difference player to player than uke to uke, or at least as much. You know. Yeah. Like if you have three people play the same uke, you hear three different tones okay, because their styles. With, with and, Tobias is here. Yep. That was yeah. Oh yeah, well Tobias has a great touch, man. He's, yeah, he's, he's all touch, dude, man. all tone, yeah, all clean. It's like that shows you don't have to yeah. play fast. No, yeah. you or anything. Dude, Toby is such a yeah. classy player. His it's like, like he, he can it squeeze exudes, like sound, yeah. just squeeze sound out of an instrument. Like wow, I don't, I don't have to play all this fancy stuff. out the tone. <laughs> Peanut butter sauce. <laughs> Peanut butter sauce. So he should move here. He's platinum <laughs> bill making for each year, you know, and we're getting towards the end of getting towards oh. your guy's last chance to get the 2019 platinum. That's the best sounding pineapple ukulele I played. Yeah, I gotta say. I don't know. Ooh. I played a cola pineapple. That was how many years ago was that? Yeah, but it's still. Yeah, I've no, never played a, po- a cola of pineapple, so Ooh. if Noah watches this, oh, really? please build us one. <laughs> oh, I got one up on you. Ew. The thing about Connie Lea, and this is, um, and this is just on a personal level for myself, but um, Joe Souza has like the biggest heart of anybody oh, I know, yeah. man. And his, you know, he is through and through a woodhead. I remember, like talking to joe about ukes that we had and he could tell you what log it came from yeah and he's like i mean the ultimate woodhead this guy and i remember my dad i, I met joe souza <laughs> woodhead what? almost sounds like a insult in a way well i mean we're all of you know everybody no, 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 that no, grew you. up in a wood shop is a woodhead yeah. you, know, no, he, you look at stuff and you no, there's like times, head. multiple yeah, times where i was at connie Lilla just talking to Joe for hours about different kinds of woods. He's oh, wonderfully excited about yeah. all yeah. of it, and you and can right, tell when you talk to him. Right now, right now he's doing a um, exclusive series of customs for us, and so it's like been going back and forth with like, oh, we can use this these woods. Oh, but I also have these woods, so it's like we got some really fun, cool. Joe, he gets excited talking going. about it too. Yeah. It's awesome. Joe is this guy. Like so, my, when I first met Joe, I was still a teenager. And uh, my dad was doing his doors yeah. for his for his shop, and this is back when Joe was building out of his garage in Kanye, just like you know, and it, he lived like right like on the water, but like off a cliff. But like it was right there, and he, my dad was doing these big core doors for him. And I remember going through the shop, and I remember thinking Joe was like the only person I knew that was as weird as my dad in the sense that he would <laughs> he would like grab like all the like you know the sawdust the shavings from yeah. like the um from the planers and he'd pick it up and smash it in his hand and go smell this <laughs> it was like it was in in like i was at, you know growing up in a wood shop like, that's why you like smelling wood too smell that you know oh, let yeah. me smell that and but joe knew exactly what log was where and he had them like in order he had them laid out and not, i'm not talking book matched like he knew what was going with what and and he could the guy could really build a uke. And he can, he can look at one of his finished instruments from like five years ago and be like, oh, yeah, that was log 247. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's it's crazy that he has such a passion for building. And as far as like a, a human being, you know, Joe was the only builder I've seen that like, I mean, remember when he got that, the, like the rights to cut coal or something on Big Island and reforest the, the, the project that he's doing up there, the reforestation. He's project. not cutting that coal, you yeah. know. No, well, he had well, he had like rights to get coal or something from that. They've only taken like one fallen tree from that place the whole time. It's a trippy thing. I'm still wanting to go over there and document it, but it's really just to set out the legacy of, and 
at this initiative to push for the future yeah. of koa wood here you know? he got well the thing was he has he he had it so where he was now getting the coal for cheaper than he was but instead of keeping that profit he dropped his prices remember that year that he did he just like dropped the prices on the the ukes and i was like I wouldn't know anybody else that would do that. And I thought that, that all the other cool. builders were like, son of a. Yeah. <laughs> all the other like, you bastard. What'd you do that for? It's but crazy. like, Joe's like, that's just his heart. Though. Joe, like, <laughs> Joe wants. market. <laughs> Joe wants people to play the ukes, you know? And like, look at this thing. It's got like a, the, the arm bevel on here. Yeah. You know, it's 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 a pineapple shape with who's got a pineapple with an arm bevel <laughs> and a side and port a that looks like a, pine, a pineapple on the side, you know? And. Uh, let's not even talk about what kind of master grade cola that is, you know, with the uh, the uh, rosette over here, you know. And I my my Weimer is built to have the same rosette, and Audrine has the oh, same yeah. kind of thing. And I think we both were probably inspired by that Sunny D uh, on fire ukulele, but you know nobody talks about that. And the snakehead, you know, with the. Uh, the I thin. think Joe took some some uh, inspiration from Sunny D's stuff early on but of course it's gone entirely in his own way since but oh, yeah, yeah the the fat wood rosettes and stuff. even the, what's the uh what's the wood in the rosette is that mango but it's kind of porous maybe it's mango i don't know and it sounds freaking amazing So it is a curly mango rosette. Curly mango rosette. There you go. And that's, I mean, like this is probably my favorite look. You know, so, cool with that. that I, I like rosette. the koa dots so. too for the. Yeah. Pre you know, keeping it natural. I'm even with the it's not gone yet. Headstock in. I think I'm, I just put it up a day or two ago. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, kind of, yeah, yeah. They don't. They don't. You know, they still. Um, you know, they have all the new. There's like these new advancements of like designs and stuff with true bracing and um whatnot but it's still a very hands-on process yeah okay. no but it's still yeah. like the 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 sound it's still a hawaiian ukulele yeah. that still has that hawaiian ukulele sound i remember early on with joe it was like um that was his main thing i remember he had all these jigs in the shop and he was showing me like the um the stuff he's like oh, this is how we bend the sides and all this stuff but he was like all the aesthetic of it you know you can be a good woodworker but you want it to sound Hawaiian. Yeah. And that was, you know, that was his big thing, and it does. They they definitely have a very Hawaiian sound to it. They got automated side benders now. Really? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Holy shit. I mean, man. They... Yeah, I haven't been over there in years. I gotta go back and really? see what it looks like. Yeah, same here. Well, the factory's even bigger, too. They've, they've expanded. Dude, I haven't been over to Kaneohe in years, even. I was over there every day, and now it's been... <laughs> Years. <laughs> we should do a company outing going to Holly with Joe's all the way in Kaneohe. Haiku. And then we can go watch Holly play in, uh, at Nikos. Oh, yeah, because he's in oh, Kaneohe yeah. too, right? Kailua. Oh, Kailua. So it's kind of... I didn't know there was a Nikos in Kailua. The other Kaneohe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the other right. half. Let's just find people that can do our work so we can go around and have fun. <laughs> yeah, where are they at? <laughs> they don't exist. They're out there. Damn it. I still don't Somewhere. Them. They're out there, but they're keeping <laughs> quiet. I don't think anybody trusts them. 
<laughs> why would you trust somebody that could do what you do yeah, and would do it for free? Dude, I don't trust myself. Why would I trust another version of myself? Dude. I'm still questioning myself. <laughs> Who am I? Jesus. Damn, Jim. Hawaiian mahogany. That's pretty articulate. Mm. Cuban mm. mahogany. Actually, it's Hawaiian mahogany. Oh, sorry. I'm also very surprised source. that one hasn't sold. Hawaiian mahogany is Cuban mahogany. It actually really? only grows here now. Yeah. Thank really? You. What? Yeah, they, they don't grow in Cuba anymore. Oh, we're not going to use any of this. Can we change the name, uh, the official name to Hawaiian mahogany? We should. Yeah, might as well, right? I always list them as Hawaiian mahogany, yeah. you know, Hawaiian Cuban mahogany, but... Yeah. It's, it's the strain of Cuban yeah. mahogany, it's but... Most all this stuff is grown right here on our island. I wish you could farm those. In fact, you know, a lot of this Cuban mahogany and stuff came from Schofield. Like, especially the stuff that Jeb and Ryan Right had. down the road, huh? For real? Yeah. Wow. So like but they, they had to, like, find these. They go not great distances to find them, but... Well, not... I mean, now they're kind of rare, but, like, I mean, all the trees that were cut down, like, you know, the, um, the Pearl Harbor attack, like, they got bullets yeah, and yeah, shit yeah. in them, and they cut them down, and... Bart Potter had a whole bunch of this stuff in his... And, and he supplied even Noah yeah. with some of those really Yeah, he ones didn't out. have that much, but it's like, yeah. you know, it's getting harder and harder to find. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great wood. It's a little bit more dense than, um, like, Honduran. Yeah. But um, it's got a beautiful sound. What Are about, you? like, tonally? What, what, what is your take on, like, Cuban mahogany versus Honduran... I, I just go types. back to what Andrew's dad told me, and this is when um, when I was having my guitar built, and I had Noah building me a Cuban mahogany and an Adirondack top, and this was like the just most ripped, curly Cuban stuff that you could find, and um, it, it's like fiddleback, you know. And, and I, you have that on your uh, tenor kolau too, yeah, right? It's on my it's on my tenor too. So um, I had it the matching woods built that way and Noah was building the thing for me and John comes in and he looks at it and he goes he goes oh Cuban and Adirondack and I go yeah he goes you know this is the best sounding guitar you can make he said this this combination of woods is the best sounding combination of woods I think and I thought that was pretty interesting because I was like you know I was always under the impression that it was Adirondack and Brazilian Rosewood as far as that goes, but I mean, John comes from like that old Martin school of, you know, that that D eight, the the yeah. OM eighteen is like more kick ass than twenty eight. So, um, on that thought, um, Jeb, I don't know Jeb those Wiener. old twenty eights with the Brazilian. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Now, but you know what? I, I kind of hear the um, Hawaiian mahogany as almost having like a touch of koa clarity. It does. Along with that's, the mahogany warmth. Of- yeah, it's not gonna Ryan is like because they're uh Cuban mahogany is generally a little bit stiffer than standard or like Honduran mahogany. It's like you get you don't get the same um might it might not be as warm. It's a little more um It's funny because like one person's warm is another person's muddy. So yeah. it's kind of a <laughs> But it's like it doesn't That's get true. that it doesn't have that mellow mahogany that sound. It drives yeah. up, it drives the You know what the, the thing low is end to a little bit better. Right here. Cuban sounds drier than Honduran. It sounds like Honduran, mm. really old Honduran mahogany. You know how it gets dry and they start oh, coming out more. Saying. It's more of a crisp sound. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, like when yeah. it's like if you listen to like a really good classic D eighteen or an OM eighteen, they have like this. Um, there's just this drive to it, and it's like you hear that, and then you hear it back to back with an old twenty eight, and it's it's that that mystery thing because you don't understand why you like both equally and you can't pick one you know and it's like but they're both this dry sound and one is very glassy and one is very just punch you in the stomach sort of sound and um the cuban does that and it's not old you know so ryan was saying it has that those characteristics where it's like punchier yeah it's it's just very quick what have you noticed in terms of coloring with yours over the years they darken quickly the yeah, Cuban, so they almost start with like a almost rosyish yeah, kind of hue to them, yeah. or like pinkish. pinkish. In a way. It looks pink, and then it starts getting this dark brown, and then turns into like this chocolate look, you know. Yeah. And um, I really, I really like that on my uh, my guitar, and my uke, 
And so the uke is really killer though, because I got that that piece of uh, it's a uh, what is it? The sapwood in there. Oh, oh that that's piece. right. So it's like super <laughs> sick. Man. It's I'm nice. Like, that is the, like like that one. That one is pretty killer. But so you you me. have a Weimer somewhat similar in Koa, right? I have a um, I have Jeb made me a, a Weimer ukulele, and it's the same fretboard design and uh, same headstock design, but mine is a slot head. This one here has the you know um, the planetary tuners, and I love slot head ukuleles, but in hindsight, it's like they're such a pain in the ass to, to change, change the shot. Oh. I really wish like I, I it is going, right. Every time I go back it on takes it, five yeah. minutes longer for each string. It's it's like, just, they look they look great, but it's like man, I would just love to have one of these. Because my fingers are not yeah. they're not huge, yeah. but it's, it's already a pain with. It. Do you, know do you that? think that like the angle really makes a difference? Not a huge. Not huge enough to. Not out. enough that. Yeah, because like it, I I. I don't think it does. I, you know, I mean, well, I mean, come on, like, are we really gonna notice the difference in break angle tonally more than we wouldn't feel? Because the I speaking the length feel... of the string is gonna be the same right. tension wise, right? So tension I mean, wise. if anything, it's the only tension difference you would feel is on the first couple yeah, of frets couple with how frets. much give it has. No, and that's that's all it is. That's it's it. a feel but factor. the scale length tension wouldn't change. But then even that difference is so yeah, because then it's yeah, not tiny, extending you know? so the minimal. string. You're only gonna all, feel right? it in the bend of fretting the first mm -hmm. like two frets, maybe, yeah. right? Yeah, after that, it's kind of like, I mean, I I don't really see that big a difference. It's not it. worth, like, no. making that. But it looks cool. That extra five yeah, minutes. It really does. Strain. It what does it... look cool. It's a damn cool. And I don't know if you guys have seen the Weimer that Jeb built me, but the, oh, I saw, yeah. the, the headstock that he put on there, it's like he capped it on top of that. So it's like, like a two-layer sort of. It's a killer-looking thing. Yeah, but every look time I beautiful. look at it, and every time I see one of his ukes go online, it's like, I, I, I think I was like, shit, I should have just got one like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, so much easier to change the strings. Well, yeah, and then speaking of changing the strings, when you have the planetary tuners, you practically don't need to even grab a winder. Yeah, dude. You know? yeah, they're they're so, so quick. Yeah. So nice. Super easy. I love those. Super easy. I what are they? Four to one, right? Yeah. yeah. So simple. Which is enough to like almost. fine yeah. tune it. But not so much that it requires a hundred turns to yeah, get it loose. Yeah, you over there, and if you don't got a winder, you don't need a drill, you don't need anything, you just game over but jeb weimer um jeb was noah's apprentice for yeah, a while he worked at koalau yeah. for what how many years maybe five years five or so. years or so dude i met jeb when i was like 15 and he was building fiddles on top of his house in <laughs> Yeah, like he used to go surf with us over there yeah and he was yeah he was making fiddles with like camel hair bows and all that stuff jeb is like work-wise he's probably like one of the most anal people i know like his build quality is exceptional. His um, well, Noah went. You yeah, know, Noah would come probably down on him that. like a hammer for those yeah. years, and you know, but he he loved it and he wanted to get to that level he's oh, yeah. at now. And it shows in his youth. So. Yeah, yeah. Jeb is, and the yeah. cool thing about Jeb is, if you go, if you if you buy a custom from him, he'll build it any way you want. I mean, you can you can have him like Jeb will. Jeb likes talking to people. He's like a real mountain man. You know, he's yeah. even burlier than me. <laughs> no, dude, Jeb's awesome. <laughs> we got to have him on the podcast. I forgot. Like, I forgot. I've known him since I was a teenager. Like, yeah, we used to go serve with him, like, almost every other day. Like, he before I knew he even built anything. And then he would just show up. Sometimes we'd have, be having bonfires on the beach and stuff. And he'd be there. And he'd be talking to me about building fiddles. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. But, and then I found out later that he worked for a Noah. And I was like, oh, oh. Okay. Jeb, <laughs> oh, okay. My, first, oh, no. my first memory of Jeb is him coming into the shop. And Jeb Jeb has he's from Virginia. So he has a he has a tendency to he, he can pull off the redneck thing really well. You know, Jeb comes up to me. Remember this? He was he comes up and I was like standing there playing a GNL. And he comes up to me, he goes, Man, I will never understand why people build them skinny guitars. You can't hear them at all. <laughs> 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 and I was like what? what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, he leaves. He walks away. And I tell Andrew, I go, hey, man, that, there's something this wrong with this guy. a little guy. weird. Huh? And he goes, he works for my brother, dude. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's messing with you. And yeah. I, go, I go, oh. And he comes back. He's like, I'm sorry, man. I was just messing with you. He's like, <laughs> he's like, yeah. he's like I didn't mean to throw you off. Like that. I was like, I was like, like, twisted his arm. I was like, dude, do you want me to throw this guy off? <laughs> <laughs> He's a little off. Speaking of Jeb, he, he just stopped by the store a couple of days. He went to pick up a... A string set oh. for one of his um, his customers. Jeb is, you know, honestly, like to me, man. Jeb is like one of my favorite people, 
And he's one of my favorite builders because he's he's that guy. When you get a uke from Jeb, he will you know he wants to make sure you're completely satisfied. He'll be call he calls you more than you call him. He's the kind of guy like he'll be like, hey, what do you want done with this? What do you want done with that? And he's like, you know, he's he's very hands on with his with his approach to the customers, and I think that's that's really cool. And when he does build ukes that he he brings over here to you guys it's always like he he knows how andrew is very meticulous about things so he likes to bit he likes to bring andrew like his best builds and stuff because you know he's not an old guy he's like younger than me but like yeah. he's he's so old school you know i like that in in builders like you won't find him like flashing his stuff on social media and uh. stuff like that much i mean he might do that some. I don't know. I don't really see him doing that. He hasn't that. updated it's, his website. Really. Yeah. I mean, he's just kind of like, no, nah, I just <laughs> like to build. And, you know, there's, it's, it's, uh, he's phrases it's stuff cool. outside. <laughs> <Yep, laughs> He's All right. In his so, bibbities. let's take a listen to this guy. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> That's what he told me. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> I did not need to know that. I know. He's like, I don't think tell anybody me wants before to know you come that. over because I don't want you to see him in my underwear. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> An awesome guy, an awesome builder. This is a Cuban mahogany uke or Hawaiian mahogany because it's grown in Hawaii, and uh, it's got maple binding, and he's got the rope binding thing going on here, which is really cool. The planetary tuners, Jeb does do a side port, like like the one on mine. I, I find that to be really good. And is you here's the see. string through bridge because I think he started yes. doing that at some point. It's uh, a string through bridge, oh, yeah. and it it's one of those things where because of the side port, you can see how clean he builds. And I think, um, you know, anybody that's worked for Null is going to be like can a tell. super, <laughs> yeah. super clean builder because, I mean, well, Noah wouldn't have it any other way. And so, like, if you if you talk to Jeb, he, he always credits, like, um, the way he builds to Noah and what Noah taught him and stuff. So, again, one of my favorite builders. Um, excellent excellent sound that he gets out of these things and my koola ukulele is my haiji ukulele or my loji ukulele but my weimer is my haiji ukulele and um for me i i play them both equally and i mean i couldn't really pick a one and two you know i, I probably play more low than high so i think um i i, I tend to gravitate more to, more towards a koola because i play more loji but that high G you come in and it's like one of those you can say it's just like and you know just because like the builder is super awesome so you know. oh and the oh, you tone know, is mature I think we just put those well, strings on though today so you might need to get that yeah. kind of sliding around here she's like are you almost done you know what it gets to a point where you're together for long enough to where it's like alright settle down yeah. <laughs> you know it's like it don't get there for you if it's not there yet yeah it's like I, I get home sometimes and she just look at me and go. <laughs> I'm just like, all right. <laughs> I think I think nights like this is more of a treat for the player than the listeners because yeah, man, we, I, you, we get to try. You know, like the starting point for one of I these ukuleles this? is like, thirty two hundred bucks. When you get to sit down <laughs> and play like you know eight eight ten ukuleles, it's like exactly you know all of these things are like someone just shot, set out like nine different. Shots and I get to else, I, I get to like I mean come on guys how long has it been since I've been here man I, I get know, to hang with my boys I miss I get you. to I get to like you know sit around and and you know knock back some whiskey eat some pizza and, and well we got to do this again Eric field mice. you're you're a gearhead and I know and you're so that's close our people, too, like, you know? yeah I live right this there kind of perfect <laughs> it's kind of just the two of us we can do the gear gear podcast yeah, yeah. <laughs> gear podcast let's All do right. it. Can right. I just check yeah. out the Weimer? Well, I think I think I'm gonna be more comfortable with this only because I play a Weimer. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I think I, probably you play with your Weimer <laughs> and yours. <laughs> oh, okay. you're pretty good at it, dude. Uh, <laughs> try my Weimer. <laughs> on our website can you start that again so it doesn't start with me saying try my <laughs> <laughs> i was like i was like i think it kind of bled in there right at the beginning yeah you know what the, the best this the is best a two-hand song okay and this goes way back <laughs> jesus 
<laughs> we, we, were, we were building... Okay, so Andrew goes and buys these islands for the store. Okay? So me, Sam, and Mike are putting together these islands. And we're going... And <laughs> so, like, Mike starts doing, like, this pirate thing. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, here's Accessory Island and all this kind of shit. And so Andrew comes by and goes, wiggle me timbers. <laughs> and freaking Sam was like, I, th I think it's shiver. <laughs> shiver me timbers. He's like, you can wiggle it too, though. I don't, know where, I don't know where I picked that up. I don't know where I picked that up. Me and Sandy say that all the time at home. We say wiggle me timbers, but it came from that. I don't know where I picked it up. It's so funny. You got all these stories that I don't even remember. Wiggle me timbers. Well, you drank a lot of alcohol in your life. Oh. And uh, as did I. But I remember stuff. Hey, let's all tell the this story of when we got stoned 10 years ago at NAMM and like, <laughs> <laughs> we're afraid to go meet with all our vendors. Like, I don't know. I, <laughs> I, 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 I hadn't year. smoked weed in so long. And then like, what? My cousin came, yeah, showed up yeah. or something. And we were like, I guess. Yeah, we'll be, we should be fine. Yeah. We walked back into the NAMM and it's just like, oh my God. <laughs> 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 we're, we're so Me and Andrew walk in. <laughs> We walk into the Fender booth, okay? Oh, and you know how the Fender booth is? They got lights and shit going yeah, on. Yeah, NAM like, is a mess it's itself. Like, like it's got all this stuff going around. And, like, I'm standing there. And, like, the, the they have Fender and Jackson are in the same thing. So you got all the Jackson girls with the shorty shorts and stuff on there. And I'm looking around. I'm just, like, laughing. And I'm just like, why are you laughing? I'm like, dude. I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nam's a little like that even sober. You're just like, what am I looking yeah. at here? I'm like, dude, I don't even know what the hell I'm looking at. He goes, he goes, dude, let's let's go in. I gotta talk to the I gotta talk to the vendor. I'm like, I can't go in there. <laughs> you go in and talk to the vendor. He's like, so come with me. I'm like, I'm gonna stay right here. I'm gonna look at guitars. He goes, okay. He goes in, I'm looking at one guitar. I don't know how long he was in there, but he came out and I was staring at the same <laughs> Oh man, that was so the worst. Messed. Actually, I was like trying to hold it together. <laughs> so this year was controlled, Nam. <laughs> Dude, like, oh, Nam used to be nuts back when we used to walk around. Oh. You know, they're selling beer on those things. Which... Oh yeah. Oh, it's still nuts. This year, I just want to wear earplugs Dude. the whole time. I've been 14 years in a row. Oh. Dude. Dude, you the Nam veteran. But last year I, I, I left early, times. you know. So, um, but. You it's go it's cool. It's just it. a it's just a long day. Like yeah. it's it's cool watching like having everyone come in and record and everything is actually really cool. Yeah. It's just long days. Yeah, you know what what we do now is a whole different thing and maybe you can come do it with us again sometime, yeah. Aaron. It's uh oh, it's bad. it's kind of fun cuz we're almost covering it like a media. Yeah. Team, I like how you, you know? guys did. I remember when you did the um was Pepper Romero and That's one of the coolest nights is yeah, whenever dude, they that come. Yeah, just like super it's awesome. Legendary man. having them. I mean, I I was looking at that going, "Oh man, so that's how we should have it cuz back back in the day we used to just go and like yeah, just uh, you know, put in orders and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Early on, I learned like there's a lot of high pressure salesmen, and I don't Dude, like that yeah. style. Like, oh, you got to make the order at Nam, or else it's like, you know mm. what? Then I won't make the order. <laughs> Bye. Lost it. <laughs> <laughs> What's your friend's name? I'll call him. You just walk right. Like guys would like come up and they'd be like, "Hey, man, you know you gotta try this," and then you'd be like, "I'm." I'm good. Just like walk out. You know what's <laughs> different is that we're all salespeople here. So when <laughs> someone tries to sell us a product, we know, yeah, we know what's up. We know if you're, you know, yeah. Well, we get excited <laughs> about certain things without talking to anybody out of booth, yeah. you know. If it's exciting, I get yeah. excited. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. If it's not, oh well. If it's not, and you're still <laughs> you're trying to sell it to me, for something that's not no. exciting. Don't yeah. try to get me artificially stimulated, Dude, man. This is gonna blow you away. Let's do yeah. it. Let's oh, do yeah. Oh yeah. Let's sidetrack. Yeah, Bleemer. <laughs> Awesome ukulele.
right, Joel? <laughs> yeah, dude, I can hold it for like four hours, but I just hit my capacity like four minutes ago. You, you want to go now? No. Go now. no, 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 we're, I'm good. Like, we'll it. make it quick, Joel. I'll make it real fast. No, 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 no pressure, but yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm just going to turn on this artificial water noise. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I almost coughed it out. Can we get a Hawaiian waterfall in the background? <laughs> All right. This is the Alawai shower. Talk this song about is called the Kaka Falls. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about bear claw. This one is super bear claw. Ooh, berry. Dude, ooh, look ooh. at that bear claw. It's berry. It's, and check berry, out very nice. The quilted maple and the Brazilian right down the middle. That is a supreme. It is a model. Even the faceplate on the uh, or the back plate. Oh, uh, yeah, stuff. check that out. And look at this. The detail work. That is insane. No, oh, and then the fingerboard ties it all in together too. Yeah. Right? Look at that, that half half. <laughs> this is like the, the Porsche. Oh, this, this would be the Porsche. De Mesquita. Now, again, with this one, this ukulele, it like, I was telling Corey, like, um, when I when I go to Washington, I usually stay um, at Auntie Jean Smith's house. And, uh, she has this stage upstairs. The yeah. court, Calais played there. Yeah. And smell this thing. Tell me this doesn't smell like the upstairs. <laughs> oh, that's right? so weird. Am I, am, I, am I like kidding or what? That's it weird. smells like cinnamon. Yeah. It's like Auntie Jean's house, man. This is like, this uke makes me feel like, and that to me, I always consider that place my second home. And this uke is like so comfortable to play. So you got a baritone kind of in the tenor tuning there yeah. with that. but um, And it's not just a baritone. It's a huge baritone. This body is... Is that yeah, a baritone scale? This is the J-Lo model. Look at the size <laughs> of the junk in the trunk on this bad boy. You know, it's like... I was going to go for Megan Trainer, but yeah. 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 <laughs> Megan Trainer. All about that bass. All about that bass. But this is a 19-inch scale length, so... Um, it's a, what is that, like a, an inch shorter than the baritone scale? Yeah. So, it's like traditional baritone, right? Yeah. But before they, they updated it. Well, let's see. Um... It plays super good. It's super comfortable. It still has a really ukulele sound. Yeah. It, like when you start yeah. moving to those longer scale lengths. It's not really bassy at all. Yeah. yeah. It, it takes away from that really mid-range uh, ukulele it's kind of response, right? Mm. There's there's a brightness to it. It sounds like a tenor. It's surprisingly like, bright. Like, yeah. And it's... Um, ah, the detail work on this thing is incredible. But I mean, I expect, I expect none, you know, none less than... Uh, the, the LFDM is With like Luis. Yeah, I mean these he he just builds impeccable stuff, you know. So, I mean the, the sound is always wonderful. Yeah, it's, I, I like his like the jangle style looking thing and stuff too. But damn, this thing is like on a different level, man. All right, That's, guys, I th I think I think we're have we hit midnight yet? Uh, we're pretty damn close. Almost. Yeah, we're about well, like a minute away. You know, I I gotta say I. I love you, Aaron, and I missed you, and I we got to do too, this man. again. And um, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Aloha. Wow. Man, this thing is killer. <laughs>
smell that. Air it. No, it smells. Your jeans it smells there. awesome. Thanks, guys, for hanging in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, Corey, we still got to record that.